Hello, everybody. My name is Joel. My name is Hugh. And we are back with the Draft House Top 100 of, of all, all time. time. Uh, this is going to be number 60 through 51. Yep. Uh, as, of course, everything before this was hot garbage, you mm-hmm. arrived at the right time to learn about all the good games. Uh, right. Do you want to start this one off? Okay. We're doing one, two, 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 one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Snake. Snake. <laughs> okay. So, uh, cut. <laughs> I have uh, number sixty is uh, Nagaraja, which is a uh, little two-player uh, game where you're uh, trying to win tiles by rolling these sticks. It's really weird because they didn't even come with dice. It's like little sticks, uh, and the sticks have pips on them and what are called rajas, I guess these little snakes. And um, you try to win a tile to place it on your your temple. And you're going through your temple trying to turn over tiles that are on the side. So when you get a tile, it has like a, a path on it. And when the path touches one of the tiles on the side of your board, you get to flip it over. And those have points on them. The goal is you don't want to turn over your three highest leveled tiles. There are three sixes. So there's ways to manipulate it to look at your your points. Or to know what's coming up. Uh, And then it's, I think, it's first person to 20 points wins. So the goal is to turn over the medium numbers and maybe one or two of the high numbers uh, to get the win. Uh, And a lot of times it'll come down to where you're just like, you're looking at the other guy and you're like, Ah, man, if I let him win a tile, he's probably going to win the game. If I win that tile, I can blindly turn over maybe two things, and maybe I'll win, maybe I'll shoot, maybe I'll turn over the six, and it'll... So the three sixes is... You you automatically lose. Okay. That that makes you automatically lose. This is uh, is one I still haven't played yet, so... And uh, it's a really fun game, and one of the better two-player games I've ever played. So my number uh, 60 is... Nagaraja. All right, my number sixty is uh, a little uh, roll and write or card and draft and write. We'll we'll call it uh, boomerang. Yeah, boomerang. Uh, Boomerang is uh, it's a card draft um, to set up a a line of cards that will have uh, places in Australia on them, uh, potentially pictures of animals or various activities. And uh, numbers you're trying to set up. Uh, uh, you're trying to set up so that at the end of the round you have a uh, number on the left card that is lower than the number on the right card in order to gain points. Uh, you're taking the places from the map and marking them off on your board in hopes to finish off places areas of the map first uh, to get points, um, and then <clears throat> collecting. Uh, Again, animals, if you get pairs of them, you'll get points. Uh, if you get... Uh, Hikers. The symbols, yes. Mountain climber. Uh, each round, you'll have to choose one of those and uh, take however many uh, points worth of it you got down. Um, and there's four of them, but there's five rounds. There's four so of you, them, but there's five rounds, so you have like a freebie round yeah, on those. Round. And basically, it's just the further you get into the game... Uh, you're still drafting, but you're running out of options of places where you're actually going to score points along the way. Yeah. So the first round or two, basically, it's almost impossible to uh, have any overlap. But by the end of the game, you're like, you're looking at a card and you're basically like, I might have to play this thing for this one specific item, even though there's like four things on the card. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's the only thing that'll score me points. Um, so it's it's like the super abundant and uh, up front and then super tight right at the end. Uh, it's a very small game. It's like a 10-minute game. And it has the boomerang effect where the first card... Right, I, I talked about yeah. that where you, you need uh, your, you, your first card when you're putting it down. You're also looking at the number more closely because <laughs> uh, the cards are numbered, I believe, 1 through 7. And... Uh, you are only going to have one card at the end. It's not like a choice. So whatever that last card is that's passed to you, that'll be your last number. So you're like, oh, I could go for a big one uh, up front. 
um, but better chance that I lose it, or I can take a, a much lower one up front, but it's almost guaranteed that I get it. Right. And these are just like little decisions that you're having to make throughout the game. And it goes up on Kickstarter soon. Oh, is it going? Is, yeah, is Madigo in? is going to publish it overseas, I think. And they're when they put it on Kickstarter, it's going to be Boomerang Australia. But then they're also going to have two other editions, Boomerang... Ah. Excellent. Those will be on my list next time, I'm Boom, sure. Boomerang uh, USA and Boomerang France. All right. I believe. Well, uh, I, loved, I loved Boomerang like yeah. from the first time that I played it. Uh, I'm sure if Matigo, uh gets their hands on it, they'll, yeah. it'll be a nice addition that comes out, so I'll probably end up with that. Um, but that's my number 60, uh, Boomerang. My number 59... Uh, <laughs> we're getting into some of the big games. <laughs> uh, this is going to be Agricola. Okay. Agricola, depending on who you talk to, depending on how this game, toity you feel about this names. This game did not make my top 100. Uh, well, it's a good <laughs> thing we're talking about my list yeah, then. did not make my list. Uh, farming simulator, yeah, we'll call it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, in this one, uh, there's, a, there's uh, uh, three games that are all sort of similar spiritual uh, connections. Uh, this is the first one that came out, and uh, the simplest, I guess you could say, although it's not a particularly simple game, you're basically building a uh, I think farm. Caver I think Caverna's more simple. Simpler. I think you're wrong. Yeah. Uh, in this one, you're building a farm, um, and then you're trying to fill the farm with uh, animals... Uh, upgrades. Uh, you have to worry about the way you're fencing certain animals in. Um, it's just like the complications mm. of trying to get all of this stuff to fit in your little space that you have available. Right. And at this point, it's like Catan. There's a million expansions. And... Oh yes, yeah. yes. I've mostly just played with <laughs> the out the box normal game. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about Caverna at some point, I think. <laughs> and maybe we'll make some comparisons. Mm -hmm. But um, Agricola is like the, almost one of the Euro-like entries. It was right? one of, it's the first one, I think, that hit hit big. Yeah, it's kind of the, the, the gatekeeper. Yeah. At least it was. Now there's so many of them out there. But um, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good place to start. It's not overly complicated, but it is a long game. There's a lot of time to like... Learn what's going on in front of you and how the choices interact and, like, how you play these big, long games. So, 59, uh, Agricola. All right. So, my 59, I believe you already had it on your list, is, uh, Century Golem Edition. Uh, yes. Back yeah. in, like, the yeah. 90s, I think. Um, 80s. So, Century Golem Edition is, like, the, uh... The turn cubes into other cubes into other cubes to get a card. <laughs> I mean, I mean, tableau building. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a mechanic that's been used in so many games. Uh, Splendor used to be like the game, the this, game right? if you wanted you... to do that mechanic. Uh, now, I I mean, it's probably passed it at some point. But when we made this list, I'd only played Abyss like one time. So Abyss is way down at the bottom. Yeah. Which has that, you know, turn stuff in and, and, and get cards kind of stuff to acquire cards. This right. one, but so this one is my high one right now, 59. Uh, they made the crappy Spice Road so version. Originally Eastern Wonder, I right. believe, which was, again, Spice Trading... Very right. dull color. Just use the same basic square cubes as your resources. Right. And that's been used in a million games. Right, and, and so it was It was a lot like Splendor. Like, yeah. that one was following Splendor. Yeah. And it, but it felt like... It felt like it was a downgrade. Yeah. Uh, the, it might have worked better Yeah. To, in, in some ways, but it didn't But feel, the big poker chips were better right. than the... Than the right, so so this first version comes out, and and again, this is why we talk about presentation a lot. That first version comes out, and we universally agreed yeah. among the players that we play with, 
it wasn't better than Splendor, we might as well play Splendor. Right. And we play Golem Edition. And it's the same game, except the components and the art has changed. Yeah. You use something that's not a normal theme. Uh, you took the little cubes and you turned them... Crystals. Not, <laughs> you didn't even really fancy them up that right. much. You just took those same generic crystals that you can get in, in hundreds of games now. Like they're the cube... They're the, they're the money from Ascension. Yes. Uh, you put them in a few different, like, more vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. You added a dash of color to the <laughs> cards. And you got the same game in front of you, but suddenly it's like, yeah, I, I want to play that game. Right. That game was fun. Let's play it again. Let's keep it around. Let's get it back to the table. And Spice Road was a trilogy, and I guess they're, it looks like they're going to make Gollum Edition a trilogy. Hopefully. So the Eastern Wonders one has already come we, out. we played the second one, and it was sort of yeah. the same thing. And it's like, yeah, this is just this, this bit of this, upgrade makes all the difference in the yeah. world sometimes. So that that is my uh, 59. My 58 is a roll and uh, write uh, on tour. Yeah, okay, we're, we're getting into the repeats now. Yeah, so on tour... Yeah. Uh, is where I mean it doesn't matter what you pick but your band is on tour and uh, there's four different mats that come with it, different musical genres but it has nothing to do with it and you turn three cards over and you're basically marking a, a board and uh, you roll dice and choose where you're going to place where you're gonna, what you're going to circle and then at the end of the game, wherever your numbers are you're driving from a small num your smallest number to your largest number without breaking it Right, yeah, so you, yeah. You, can, you can have repeats of numbers and yeah. you can drive through them, but once you've hit a number, once you've hit the number 37, right, you can mm -hmm. no longer go to anything lower. 36 or lower, right. it's got to go 37 or up. And it just, it plays really well. Uh, played the app, but didn't really like the app. No, no, it, not not nearly as much as yeah. sitting around, but part of it is like people just sitting there waiting to see what like pops right. up, and right. you already see what's kind of on their board, and... So as you're playing it by yourself, right, you're just yeah. sitting there looking at, like, the one thing that's in front of you, but uh, on tour is one of those rolling rights where you can actually comfortably look at right. other people's boards. Um, which... And you can kind of make fun of people, It's uh, even because it doesn't take a lot of thought when you're playing on tour, so you can laugh. Now, when... once, once you've sort of set up your, your right. like, right. road, right, people know what you're trying to <laughs> right. do, at least. And so when somebody's, like, they have to sink a small number or if they have to pass on a number it's it's funny and that yeah and then there's of course just the the rolling of the dice where you know <laughs> if you're doing it here by yourself right it only matters <laughs> here but like right. you roll it and you're like oh i got what they needed and they're screwed <laughs> right or this one's groaning about the number even though you're like i don't know what's you know necessarily happening over there and you're like at the end of the game you know you got the one guy who's got the one thing that connects two sections and he needs you to roll doubles to win the game to get the higher score and you're like all right it's so not, it's not a game that you feel uh like you've lost no. really either like no. you're just playing against yourself yeah. yeah so yeah my 58 is on tour it's really good uh you can buy it off of board, board game, game tables tables.com tables. oh, so i mean don't uh, some people resell it on like ebay and amazon and stuff for a higher price but you can just buy it straight from the company yeah, uh, and it's and, and you can buy extra boards. So the more boards you have, the more people can play. Right, we've talked to them a few times. Yeah. They're they're pretty good. Yeah, they're, and they're super quick. Yeah. So yeah, so fifty eight on tour. All right, my number fifty eight, keeping them big, going with Scythe. Jesus. Okay. Uh, Scythe is a game that when you pull it out of the box, you think you're about to play Risk. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks like you're about to engage in, in some warfare. We're about to so, fight. So you're in like an alternate history of Russia uh, where World War II didn't go so well and people are scrapping together um, big metal sort of mechs, but they're making it out of like farm equipment. Um, and you're just trying to basically gather resources, uh, expand out sort of build up your own little uh, area with your faction. Um, but the thing is, you have to keep the people happy while you do it. Yeah. So you can't really war with the people around you. You can, and you can take over their spots to gain resources, but your public sort of approval in the game will, will drop drastically. And one of the big factors of the game is 
uh, your points in categories get multiplied by how well uh, you were liked in the game. So it looks like a big war game, but it's really more of just managing the resources that you have in front of you and figuring out where you can take an opportunity here or there to branch out uh, versus not taking the risk of basically offending the populace. Yeah, you're trying to win four of the star categories. Yeah, so there's there's multiple areas of advancement in the game, um, building up your... Um, each one of the boards that you have has a lot of spaces that can be like uh, covered up in order to... Uh, like you're building up that certain part aspect of your um, tribe. Mm-hmm. Um, and those will give you eventually stars in the game. You get enough stars, the game ends. Um, but that doesn't mean you necessarily won. Right. It's still a point count. So you can have all the stars in the world, but if you're multiplying it by nothing, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean anything. Whereas the next guy, well, he hasn't done quite as well. He hasn't advanced quite as far as you, but he's done it in a more peaceful manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's now multiplying all of his points by three or four and leaving mm-hmm. you in the dust. Um, so it's this weird... It's just this weird thing where it looks like you're about to do a bunch of fighting and really what you're about to do is a bunch of farming and mm-hmm. like trying to coexist peacefully and maybe taking an uh, mm-hmm. opportunity where it matters, but mostly just trying to figure out how to exist in the board that's shaping up around And you. it has a lot of replayability because like each one of the boards is just a little different. Like, when you're playing in front of you, not everybody's board is the same. Right, so you have to, you have a, a pawn piece, basically, where you can take an action on a board, and there's two, basically, actions mm-hmm. available to you on the top or the bottom, and then you have to move it on the next turn, but those boards do not, they're not identical, so the right. two actions that are available for one person are not the same two actions available for yeah. another. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I love that game. Lots was- of cool expansions. Still have not played Rise of Fenris. Yeah, still haven't gotten to the to the <laughs> legacy one yet. Yeah. Eventually, but man, there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of games back games. Here. Uh so number fifty eight, that's Scythe. Number fifty seven. Finally let's take a little break. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're gonna talk about Baron Park. Yeah, Baron Park. Uh Baron Park is Tetris, the park creating game. Mm. Um you have a board, one board to start with. Yeah. And you are uh, getting polyomino pieces. <laughs> You're using those pieces to fill in areas on your board. Um, hitting certain points on the board, hitting certain squares will give you bonuses uh, throughout the game. Uh, particular ones on each board will trigger you getting an additional board. So your park starts out as a as one smaller grid and eventually you have four of them all tacked together and uh you're just trying to build the most uh structurally sound park in the fewest pieces possible well and you get if you complete your board each little board faster than the other people you get the little bear monuments which are worth a lot of points right um, which is where you want to use like the the bigger pieces possible, but then using the big pieces can make it much more difficult to uh, finally fill out your board in the end. So you're trying to balance like fast, like massive expansion versus like uh, doing it correct, right? Giving yourself the, the space to use properly in the next turn. Um, there was a bunch of these types of games that all came out at the same yeah. time. It was kind of the first one that we got to, and I think it was kind of the first one out, and it really just stuck as, like, this is the most interesting... I mean, Patchwork had been out. The little two-player one. Right, but, but the multiplayer, yeah. the big the big multiplayer ones. Because then after Baron Park came out, then Uwe Rosenberg hit Started with just bam, bam, bam. One, two, out. three, yeah. all in a row. Uh, Scarabia also... Yeah, was... Scarabia whatever that game was called, came out yeah. not too long after that. That was Blue Orange, yeah. Um, and none of them seemed to be... None of them seemed to quite have rules that worked any better than Baron Park. None of them had, like, a theme right. that was more interesting than Baron Park. Um, I mean, depending on the things you like, obviously, but certain themes, again, we see them time and time again. So when you just take a concept and throw something <laughs> a little weirder at it, like making a... a a bear zoo. Yeah. Uh, 
it just gives it that little extra like thing to make it memorable. Um, so, and now with, with the expansion, you got five boards. With, Sorry, I haven't gotten to the expansion, with, so I know you've seen that. Yeah, with the monorail system. It, well, it's really, it, it it even helps it out even more. And then that, that also, you build up, too, yeah. on that one, right? You build, so you build like, like a, a 3D. You build a little monorail system, and the monorails get points on them as you build it. Yeah, I'll have to see that. But I haven't yeah. seen that one. On its own, uh, yeah. I put Baron Park uh, at 57. All right. What the, was there a duck in the apartment? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're at 57. 57? Yep. Alright, so my 57 is... Modern Clue. <laughs> so, Mysterium. Uh, okay. <laughs> there is, I think, a Modern Clue yeah. out there. Alright. <laughs> so, Mysterium is... Uh, there's one person who's ghost. Uh, he gets Dixit-style cards... Surreal image painting, uh, sort of painting like cards, uh, and then everybody else is playing a uh, like a psychic medium uh, who's trying to guess where I died and who killed me and what they used to kill me. Uh, and, but the only way the ghost can interact with the mediums is through these pictures, uh, and it's co op in style per se. Till the end. Yeah, you wanna you wanna help get people to the end to the final round because you, you you need everybody to get there for it to for, the for it to actually matter. Yeah, but once you're there, you're still gonna declare a winner at the end of the game. Right. The, everybody who guesses the actual the actual solution wins. Right. And Could be multiple winners. Yes. Um. And so. Uh, each round, like you as a medium, you know what you're trying to guess right. next, whether it's the location, the killer themselves, or the weapon, yeah. um, so that the cards, when they give them to you, because there's <laughs> all kinds of things on these cards, right. it hopefully point you in the right direction. Uh, sometimes you just have terrible cards <laughs> as the ghost, it's so like you're six trying cards. to uh, <laughs> slough uh, to them, but also... Hoping that they understand that there's no right. meaning to be gathered from them. Um, so you're playing as the ghost this balancing act of like when to uh, try to really go in on an idea versus like this turn I just need to make these cards disappear right. to give me a chance. And people around the table can help you. Yeah, so a lot so of times everybody else is playing co-op. When you, when you give them multiple cards, sometimes somebody will go... Unless those don't mean anything. Right. <laughs> Although sometimes, you know, you're, you're out there and you're trying to be helpful for the other guy. Right. And the ghost got him in the right, like, mindset and then you just... Swerve you just him off. The, yeah. You just threw the stick right in the spokes. <laughs> um, yeah. This, like, that game is fun on yeah. on both sides. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's other games where it's more... Where it doesn't have the, the uh, competitive aspect for the right. person that's the odd man out. Something like Spyfall, yeah, um, where people don't like being they don't like being outside put on the, put on the group. They don't like being put on the spot. Well, yeah, but in this way, as the ghost, like you have a very yeah. particular thing, but you're still like included as part of like you're trying to win with them. And now there is Obscurio, and at some point that may overtake Mysterium for me because it has the it's traitor, very Mysterium like, but it has the traitor. But yes, but it has a, a traitor component in yeah. it, where you play a little game of. <laughs> werewolf each round too right. where everybody closes their eyes and things happen yeah. to the cards so okay so 57 is Mysterium 56 is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle okay which is a co-op Harry Potter game uh it's made by Usopoly or whatever they're called the, the op the op the op the op uh uh it is one of the better co-op games. Let me preference it in the fact that I think you have to like Harry Potter. Uh, I mean, not you that really much. Like Harry Potter, I'm, not, I'm not super into Harry Potter, but I had a fun time with this but, game. I like deck builders. Right. And this is a deck building co-op game. And you're literally just playing through the books. So it comes in a box, and you play year one... And if you beat that one, you open up a box that says year two, it adds some cards, makes your characters a little stronger, 
and you just keep going. Um, yeah, uh, this game was really good. We played enough deck builders at this point where the first like two or three years were yeah, very, yeah, very, simple, very straightforward. But we, you know, toughed it out on those, and that was good because really that the last half of the game right. makes uh, it was, challenging. Was yeah, we lost uh, two two yeah. of the years, I believe. Yeah. Um, we got we got there eventually. Yeah, right. Come on, we, we play enough games. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, so I wish it. I wish it started just a little bit uh, more. Yeah. On the difficult side, but I. But also, like, how many games, like, deck builders have we played? Right. Game? Like, we know the concepts. Right. So, I'm sure if you're coming in as, like, one of your, sort of, like, a perfect uh, first deck builder, because it starts off so simple, right. and then it builds its own difficulty as you go. I I think it definitely can be played with a family. Yes. Because I think it, you four player? Yep, you can go up to four. You can go up to four player, and yeah, I think you can play with a family, and then uh, parents can te- help teach their kids how to do a deck builder. Uh, but yeah, and it and like I said, if you if you like Harry Potter, you need to get this game. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Just, I like yeah, as an outsider for Harry Potter, it's one of my like favorite Harry Potter things. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, as like an, like a real yeah. big fan, like, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing the way it's, uh, built. So, and there's an expansion, but, uh, so that, that's, uh, my 56th Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. All right. Uh, number 56 on mine is, uh, Stonemeyer Games. Mm. Their newest game right now, uh, Tapestry. Oh, Tapestry. Uh, Tapestry is a, uh, 4X game. Uh, light, I guess. Yeah, Most light. 4X games are uh, very long, like, campaign-style games. They take, you know, three hours minimum. There's a million things you can do each turn. There's a million choices, and they come with a rule book that looks like a small novel. Uh, tapestry... Giant props for the rule book. <laughs> yes. Tapestry, we talked about the rule book multiple yeah. times already. Yeah. Tapestry, like, out of the box, you can get it up and running in, like, 20 minutes yeah. for your first game. Um, and already basically know all of the rules. Um, it's four pages. It's, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's four pages. Uh, because the cards are extremely well, like, planned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the symbols on them, like, all of the information is really easy to yeah. read and gather turn to turn. Um it's not it's not a full fledged like 4x game um it's civ builder light yeah it, it it is light but that being said if if somebody took that like system and built the actual 4x game it would still be the quickest like to learn right. quickest to get everybody up and running um and it also looks really like good yeah it looks great um it's good art the little buildings, like yeah. you, you are uh, building. Um, it's polyominoes, but it's it, yeah. You're, you're, but it's Tetris piecing again. 3D. But instead, you actually have physical buildings that yeah. you're building into the space that you're working on. Um, each round for you is uh, in in a in an age, basically an era, which has a card that sort of dictates. Uh, things you can and can't well not necessarily it's things you can should do and shouldn't do for that right. time but you can of course go around them right it's never really limiting you from anything at least as far as I saw now he uh, came out with an FAQ for it or a, or a cheat sheet for uh, where he revamped some of the so I had civilizations because some of them were easier to win with so I heard some of the civilizations were a bit easier <laughs> than others yeah uh, I have not played this game very many times at, uh, at this point, um, so I haven't seen like the super imbalance. I saw it a couple times. Um, I, I'm sure it exists, in this yeah. but it sounds like it's already yeah. been rectified. Yeah, he fixed it. Um, but like, if you want to play one of those giant games and you don't have the time or the patience... If you've played it a couple of times, you can get a game in in about an hour. Yeah, yeah. If but but if you like those big, I can do anything mm-hmm. sort of games. Th- this is this is your this is your small box version. Yeah, um, it's 
you know, half the price of any of those other giant 4X games, uh, half the time, yeah. half of the effort to get started, but I don't think half the enjoyment. I think you're still getting most of what you're looking for. I don't know. I don't know how well it sold. I haven't looked at any yeah. of those numbers. It definitely do, didn't do a wingspan. <laughs> so Not much, I think, last year yeah. did a wingspan. Uh, like I guess it's... If people look at it, it's not for everybody. No, I'm not. But the rules are so simple, I actually think it is for everybody. Yeah, I mean, if you want to figure out whether you would like some of these bigger, giant, chunky games, uh, take a swing at Tapestry. It's the quickest way you could maybe learn. Yeah, you can play Tapestry, and then you would know if you'd want to take that next step into a three- or four-hour long game. Yeah. Um, So 56, Tapestry... 55. Why we didn't have to spend so much time on Agricola is Caverna. Caverna! Uh, Caverna is the, I don't know if easier necessarily, but is, I think, the better of all three of the Uwe Rosenberg uh, line of games. Uh, You still have the farming aspect in that one on one side of the board, but on this one, you add uh, a cave system. Where you're doing most of your building, your dwelling. Uh, in this one, you're playing as dwarves. Those are your yep. uh, workers that you're placing. Um, and you're basically just trying to keep them alive. And you can adventure. And you can adventure. Yeah. Um, so your your point salad has increased basically double in this one. Yeah. Um, some weird rules in there that, that are interesting. Um, <laughs> you can feed most of your workers sticks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you don't have to worry <laughs> too much about the farming side if you don't want to. Um, cause I am not a fan generally of games where, where with, with the general upkeep. Yeah. Where I have to feed the, my workers. Yeah. Um, it always, it never feels like, uh, <laughs> it's always just a chore. Right. Like in most games. Um, and it takes away from like sort of the the fun of it. And this one, it's still there, but yeah. it's sort of dressed up in a funny way, where you can do a lot of weird stuff to to end up feeding your workers. Um, the next game in that line, Feast of Odin, oh. uh, it basically you go from the first one, Agricola, then you double the amount of stuff you can do with Kurna, mm-hmm. triple it, then you double or triple it with Feast of Odin, and I. Our table generally thought that one just sort of went too far. Yeah. Uh, an unnecessary amount of space is just... You could spend 30 minutes trying to figure out where... If you're one, if you're an optimizer, you're going to spend... And there are a few optimizers. So much time trying to figure out where to play in that game, where this one uh, doesn't take it that far, but right. still has that very complicated like setup, like building your engine. Yeah. There's so much... There's so many ways you can do it. Um, and, and so tons of choices to make without ever feeling quite that bogged down. Yeah. Um, so, that's why for me it's just slightly higher on the list than, uh... Agricola. With those games, I think Caverna's the one who hits the sweet yeah. spot. Yeah, that, for, at least that's, for me. I think, and I think that was generally the consensus for most of the people that we play with, so, uh, which I agree with, hence <laughs> it being just slightly higher. So number 55, Caverna. All right. Well, my 55 is Cowboys, because I love Cowboys. So my 55 is, you're going to rob a train. So it's Colt Express. Uh, Colt Express is uses the uh, Robo Rally uh, programming yeah, this, technique. This is, this is a programming but game. But you add them into a pile instead of them being in front of you. And then somebody grabs the pile... And goes through them, so it's like, almost like a little movie starts. You're like, boom, right. boom, this happens, this happens, this happens. And you move all your pieces one at right. a time. Your turn isn't all at once, it's, right. it's intermingled you know, throughout. Yeah. And uh, you're picking up bags of money and diamonds, and uh, you're shooting people and making them drop their stuff. And there's a sheriff, or marshal, and... Uh, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most money wins. Right. Uh, very simple game. Yeah. Uh, 
execution is mostly in the presentation. You yeah. build yourself a little train, yeah, a little three so that train. you can actually see like what level and area you're on. You could have done this on a board, no yeah. problem, but it just that little extra aesthetic. It's cool, is nice. Um, you never, <laughs> even when bad stuff happens to you, it's generally funnier than right. it is like all that disappointing, right? Um, and like you might have a, an idea of who's winning at any Man. point, but a lot of it is secret uh, due to the the pieces. Right, they're always they're always hidden, so uh, you don't have to just sit there and watch yourself lose necessarily. <laughs> right. Or you could just have one or two amazing pieces and be <laughs> sitting back like you're losing, and then just flip them over and be like, "Ah, I got you all." And one guy's on top of the train, and the other guy's here, and the other guy's here, and you both think you're gonna shoot the guy in the middle. And then and he then goes he down, and, and then you shoot, shoot each other. other. It's so good. Suddenly, you've made a few more enemies <laughs> at the table. Yep. So, yeah, my 55 is Colt Express. Super medium weight, easy game. Uh, looks great on the table, but Colt Express. Uh, my 54 also looks great on the table. It is Quirkle. Uh, it's probably one of the highest, probably might be the highest game of a game you can just go buy it anywhere. Right, yeah. Uh, basically, Scrabble with colors and shapes. Right. And it's, it's already been on your it list. Was, it was in the uh, 80s on mine, yeah. And basically, you're trying to get six color, six of the same color in a row, or six uh, of each shape. In the same color, or... Right. Uh, the other one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so, and then that's a Quirkle, and you get six points, and usually you get, and when you do a Quirkle, you get a double it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's super easy to teach. It is a game I have taught my mother. Uh, I've taught my older brother that game, and he doesn't play board games at all. And, uh, generally I don't know if I've played that game where people haven't enjoyed it. So, yeah. 54, Oracle. Right, and then the one other thing that I'll, I'll add again mm -hmm. is that there there's sort of two different games that you end up playing there. You're either yeah. playing the family game where it's like this right. big, very spread out, like right. all over the table. You guys are just throwing down whatever <laughs> tiles you can. Or you get the group together that actually is uh, pretty competitive and yeah. suddenly it becomes this tight, like perfectly made cube where you have to have exactly the right piece to play next. And yeah. That's the game we end up playing, yeah. which, which is my favorite, but uh, yeah. my family doesn't play games that way most of the time. So it's one that sort of fits at any table. 54, Corporal. 54. That brings me to my 54. Oh, Hugh, you're not, you're not going to believe this. Oh, no. Terraforming Mars. Wow. Um, ter Terraforming Mars has an interesting history at our table. I can't remember. Table. Is that my number 100, or did I drop it off I think it. I think you took it completely off. No, so that's was it. It was, not my, it was my number one. Number 100. Number 100. All right. Uh, Terraforming Mars has an interesting history at our table. We played completely wrong uh, the first few times we played it, yeah. which actually made it kind of a more interesting game. It made game. it we, way hard. We weren't taking... Uh, we were all not taking a basically 20 we weren't points taking every our, turn. We weren't taking our allowance, basically, when you went around yes. the, on the turn. Yes, so so those first turns are like <laughs> desperately trying to get money, and yeah. it was kind of great. Um, but once we started playing it right too, and we actually saw the <laughs> options available, like um, wow, yeah, there's there's quite a bit going on here. Yeah. Um, I like this is another game where it's not a deck building game; it's more hand management. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's one of those every cards is unique game. So and there are a million cards at and, this point, and there are a million cards at this point. Yeah. So you don't get to pick your strategy that much in the beginning of the game and if you do uh it will bite you because it will stop you from doing exactly yeah. what it is you want to do so it's one of those uh it's one of those longer games where you actually have to go with the flow yeah. right that's the thing that i like where you can't you don't just from the beginning mathematically have all your turns picked out and you're just okay i gotta do this for the next two hours exactly right. in one direction uh, this one has quite a bit of leeway where you're bouncing back and forth between uh, when you need to collect money, when you need to burn, build up your resources. Um, you do have to focus on getting your engine started, but also, like, 
you need to start laying the groundwork immediately on certain things or you'll miss your milestone bonuses. Um, there are a lot of people who think this is the best engine building game. And um, maybe I haven't played it enough. It's definitely in the top five on Board Game Geek. Yeah, may maybe I haven't uh, played it enough to push it like all the way up the list because I like engine building. Um, but I, I do definitely recognize that it's there and that I have fun with it. Just a number 54 fun with it instead of, yeah. you know, top 10 as yeah. a lot of people like to put it. So a number 54 for me, Terraforming Mars. Number 53 is almost not a game. Uh, is it the mind? I'm going to have to punch no. you in the face. No. Okay. <laughs> no, but it does yeah. have some numbers in it. Oh, okay. uh, Ricochet Robots. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Ricochet oh. Robots, you... Um, so there is robots on the board of different colors. The board is just a giant, uh, it's just comprised of pieces that are uh, straightaways and then random walls and blockades built into it. And all you're doing is you flip a, a card that basically tells you where you're trying to go and with uh, which robot you need to get there. And then you're sitting there, and as quickly as possible, in your own head... Seven. You're coming up with how many <laughs> moves it would take you to get to that area. But the robots have restrictions. They don't just stop. They keep going right. in a straight line till something stops them. So you have to figure out, okay, where do I have to move this robot? But not just one robot. You might need to use three robots where you have to pull two into the right area so that they're there as, like cushion softeners to stop <laughs> your robot to then get it turning and so it's on like the right path so then you have to figure out what that path is count up how many moves it'll take to get there and then the second you do you yell out that number like you did seven now uh timer is going and somebody and everybody yell, has a chance i can do that in six to, moves to, to get there where they can say they can do it in less moves and then once the time is out uh that person has to be able to show you has to be able to do uh, that in that amount of moves. Now I will say, I hate this game, <laughs> but uh, it is fun to see the smart ass who somebody says I can do that in four moves, and they're looking and they go I do it in three, and then then you look at and then you go, okay you you go, and then they look back at the board and they realize they can't do it in three. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving the wrong robot the yeah. whole time. Uh, like oh I can't do it in three. Yeah. Um, yeah, it for a, a lot of people who've seen this, they're mm -hmm. like, "This is almost not like a game on its own." Um, but you play it on a board. Yeah, it is. You don't need a board. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> You'd be like chess. Um, that's true. Eh? Yeah. You just build walls under a chessboard. Yeah. You're good to go. But um, yeah, it, so it's it's just a math game, and it's I mean, it is a solitaire game in that like nobody's moves will affect yours in any way yeah. you're just coming up with the fastest um but it's fun to see everybody sit around and like try to they're trying to work it out but you can't work it out like you can't move things around on the board everybody's doing it you don't want to give anybody hints so you're sitting there just trying to like piece it all together and hopefully faster than the guy next to you and uh yeah, get out of here <laughs> <laughs> number 53 ricochet robots <laughs> Better than whatever hot garbage fifty what was coming up. What was, I'm sorry. What was the other version of that game? There's like my a, micro micro robot. That right? one I will agree. <laughs> Not so great. Okay. Uh, well, my fifty three. Uh, Shem Phillips. Uh, place one, pull one. Raiders of the North Sea. <laughs> so. Raiders All right, this 53 is not hot garbage. <laughs> so Raiders of the North Sea is a uh, worker placement game with the easiest uh, mechanism for worker placement. Right. You have a dude, you put him on the map, you do that action, and then you grab another guy off the map and do that action. And that gives you the guy you're going to use in your next turn. They all do something different. There's a little there's a little complication right. in that uh, the color of the guy matters, yeah. determines what, what exactly is happening. Where you can place it the next where time. Where you can place it and what happens on that yeah. uh, tile when you place it. Or not tile, but location yeah. when you place it. Uh, I will preference the fact that I will not play Raiders of the North Sea without the two expansions. 
I mean, I will, but they're I, really good expansions. They're really good. If I, I have them, so there's no reason not to set it up that yes. way. Yes. But there's no reason for you not to go out and just yeah. buy the base game and play that. Although, playing with the beer and the, the Jarls or whatever, it's good. It's worth it. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, can't remember what the expansions cost. But I think the base game is like 50 bucks. Yeah, I mean, out the box, $50 is is a decent investment. For, probably for a probably cheaper if you can probably on Amazon. The game's been out a long time. <gasps> Tell people about Amazon. Uh, but yeah, I really like it. I love the two expansions. Uh, and, and like I said, it, out of the box, once you have it all set up, the mechanisms of your turn goes by really quick. Right, this is not mm-hmm. a game... You, you You're you doing two things on your turn. You can't really agonize over right. your turn like that because you, the person you put down can only go to the spaces where there isn't someone already. Right. And then the person that you pick up has to already be out somewhere on right. the board. So you're already limited pretty pretty well by those yeah. by those uh, two things. But, yeah, so my 53 is Raiders of the North Sea. It's really good. Uh, <laughs> my 52 is said many different ways many different wrong ways, but it is Twa. Also, Troyes. Troyes? Troyes, and every other way anybody wants to pronounce it. Uh, This is a dice drafting game? Uh, Acceptable. Dice drafting, we'll call it. But it's weird because you can pay to take your opponent's dice. Well, that's the the drafting part. (laughs) Right. But so, it, yeah, you're not drafting out of the pool in, in front of you. Right. It's off of anywhere on the table. But uh, in order for you to take from somebody else, you, you gotta, gotta give them, pay them. You gotta give them money. Uh, it's a Euro game. This company has made a whole bunch of great Euro games. Uh, it's probably their oldest one. If I can remember off the top of my head. It's like one of the older ones. Game out a long time ago. There's an expansion for it also. But uh, it is a game that the mechanics are super smooth when you're playing it. You think that when you're playing it, you like you'll think you're far behind, but I don't think I've ever played a game of it where at the end, when you've tabulated all the points, it hasn't been relatively close. Right, yeah. I mean, um, you, you make in order to make a big move, you tend to have to pay. Right. And then that paying allows them that to other make person, their next big move. Yeah. yeah. So and as long as you're just paying attention, I mean, you're not yeah. going to fall that far behind on that. But uh, it's, it's not for everybody because it does have that Euro base coat paint blah... It doesn't look like it. It doesn't have a theme, really. Uh, it's just the mechanics, really. Spruced up with European, you know, stained glass windows and stuff like that on it. Uh, but that game, the mechanics for me, easily gets it into my top 100. And I don't think it'll ever leave my top 100. Because the mechanics are that good. So, 52, twa. Uh, 52, um, I don't have a specific version down here. There's a lot of versions of this game, but it's going to be legendary. Um, I've played uh, six, seven, eight different versions of this. Some good, uh, some okay. <laughs> yeah, so, some some better than others, obviously. Um, but, I mean, that's just how it goes when you take a game and you... you I mean, you keep the core there. And the core is the skin. same. You start as a, you start with a base hand. It's another deck builder. You have two basically rivers of cards. One where you're purchasing to add to your deck. One where you're defeating something. Depends on what you're playing. Um, and uh, but basically, you're talking the Marvel one. Uh, it, yeah, the, the Marvel ones. The Marvel one's good. Um, it's co-op in that you all have to stop the bad guys, the top river, um, before they wreak too much havoc um, in whatever setting you're in. But if you successfully do that, then it goes to the points. Um, so you're doing a balance between like collecting points 
um, which you can get from the from defeating guys, but not necessarily as many as you can from just purchasing cards uh, <clears throat> from from to add to your own deck. Now, I actually like the game without the last scoring mechanic. Yeah, so so, so I mean, you could just you you can ratchet up the difficulty on there. Yeah. You can uh, you can. There's a lot of. Um, did we win? Did we lose? That's really why. I yeah, like to play there, the game. there is a lot of for each box. Even there is a lot of like modules of for setup. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just crank up the difficulty by putting in like the toughest boss and the toughest bad guys and then the weakest cards. Uh, and, and then if you guys just survive, like <laughs> that's a victory in itself. Right. Um, but that that other aspect does exist um, if you want to go that route. Right. No. We're a pretty competitive table. Yeah. Um, that being said, I also don't have much problem with, okay, can we just try to get win. to the end? Yeah. But in order for that to be, like, important, we have to first make it difficult enough. Right. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, then we're just doing uh, right. a Dominion style or Ascension style, like, collect the, yeah. collect the cards. Now, here. what would be the worst legendary one that you've played? I think I have in my mind what, what it is. This is Big Trouble. Yeah, I think it's Big Trouble. They, Although I love trouble. that IP. Yeah, Big Trouble and Little China. So some of this, I you know, I don't know if there's different artists necessarily for the games, but, but the that art, one felt no, the art that one bad. felt lower like quality. Yeah. Than uh, some of the other ones, I know that the uh, Legendary Encounters, which is like the Aliens one, is supposed yeah. to be the best. Yeah. I've never played that one. Um, I actually thought Buffy was better than yeah. I thought would I thought it was gonna be hard. That one was hard. That that one was one of the tougher ones that we played. Yeah. Um, but like overall, it's that core gameplay, yeah. right? That we're talking about. That's the important part of Legendary, which is deck builder, uh, co-op, two streams of uh, cards to contend yeah. with the purchasing ones versus the fighting, um, and then you get to add in your you know odds and ends with each one from there but overall number 52 legendary okay which i guess leaves number 51 for you 51 51 for me is gonna be uh horrified yeah i already had that one on my list yeah so <laughs> horrified feels a lot like pandemic yeah uh except i hate pandemic ding i have not liked it since the first time i played it not uh, a big fan it's either. got the it gets way easy to uh to to captain couch couch yeah. coach yeah. to, to quarterback, captain quarterback it whatever you want to call it yeah um where it f sort of end up feeling like one person's playing the game <laughs> and everybody else is just doing the things that they ask them to do yeah um it's very uh generic right looking yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, the theme is there, right? That one's set right. up well. Yeah. I don't know why I'm talking so much about Pandemic for this yeah. one, but the, the theme is there. It's all set up well. Because a lot of people just play Pandemic. Yeah, I, I just don't... Uh, but, but you know, just putting out the cubes and stuff, yeah. it's all very just kind of, eh, yeah. looking in front of you. Horrified takes all that, goes, theme is the most important thing here. Yep. Uh, gives you uh, instead of fighting against a disease, you're fighting against a various universal uh, monsters. Universal classic monsters. Um, out the box, you know, you get the box. Nice like presentation. You pull off the cover. <laughs> there's immediately like a script thing there that looks like the old uh, <laughs> silent films, right? Like the intro to it. You start pulling everything out. You've got all the monster creatures there, um, and, and you each put out, one has a different win. Yeah, so thing. so you set up the board. You got all these sort of like classic old time uh, <laughs> horror settings as like the areas on the board. Yeah, um, and then you get out the monster cards, and of course they look cool, and then they all work differently to give you a lot of different um, variety in how the game is going to be played. Um, some of your cards. Are, they're not hidden, right? right? They're like your own actions here yeah. where you choose what to do with them, which is just the same as his other co-ops. Right. Um, but And everybody has a character just like Pandemic where it allows you, gives you yeah, superpower. Yeah, but, but at the end of the... But the end of it, there feels like there's more, like, communication right. um, at the table. 
there's more talking about what you should do next or how to do something next. Um, it feels like you need the other people there more. Um, so if I'm going for a co-op, like I want it to feel like everybody has to be involved to win. Right. And whereas in like Pandemic, I feel like you just throw it to one person and you let it be done. This one feels right. like you're actually all doing something. Well, I think people, when they play Pandemic, you get the quarterback thing because... It just has all those little cubes that are supposed to be the diseases. And right. a lot of times, if you're playing with people who aren't hobby gamers, they're just like, uh, all right. Yeah. But in a horrified, because the monsters are on the board, the right. little things that damage the monsters are on the board, and they can be like, oh, I need to get that gun so I can go shoot Dracula's coffin. Right, and, and you know? the the system is uh, is color coded, same as it is in like Pandemic, um, but it sort of feels like it fits more, like it applies yeah. more in what you're doing. All the weapons are, are in red, and all of the like healing stuff is in uh, I think it's like blue basically, right. and uh, so you know you need a bunch of red stuff together to go fight Dracula. Right, because um, I don't, you don't even fight. Frankenstein and Frankenstein and and Frankenstein's monster and Lady Frankenstein. Yeah, you're just trying to get them together. Yeah, you just want once they meet each other, they <laughs> stop being a threat basically. Yeah. So, uh, and with the what? It, yeah, that's neat. Is it the mummy? I think if you stop the boat from showing up, then it's then it doesn't even matter. I think that's Loch Ness. Maybe or, that's uh, maybe that's a creature from creature Black, Black Lagoon. Lagoon. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've only played this one a few times as well, so it's still kind yeah. of a newer game, and I don't, I don't know all of the pieces like perfect at this point. It's fine. Yeah. It happens. Um, but I know well enough that like I like it. Everybody I've shown, uh, everybody that I've shown how to play, has gotten it and liked right. it, um, and, and it stayed in the collection, which is always a point of okay, we must have liked that one because we played it a bunch of times, and usually that's where we just give a game away. Yeah, but we're keeping that one, so... Yeah. It's just it's good. Too bad, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. And whoever that person was, the artist or the... Whatever you were, the art director... Yeah. Of who, of that game for Ravensburger, I think it is. Yeah. Good job. Man. <laughs> tip of the tip of the cap. It, was, it looks great. All right, it's my 51 horrifying. So movie. my 51 is, again, Modern Clue. Uh, it's a... Uh, <laughs> You can't uh, have Mysterium on there twice. Uh, I like Clue. Clue didn't make my list this year. It used to be down in my, my bottom ten. Uh, 51 is Chronicles of Crime. So, in Chronicles of Crime, it's app-driven. And I know some people don't like apps with their board games. You, you don't like apps. Yeah, I don't, I don't generally like it. But in Chronicles of Crime, you have an app, and every piece of the game has a UPC code on it. And you take your phone and you click the, the app on the, the UPC code and it'll tell you some information. Like if you go to Scotland Yard, you'll click on it and then it'll tell you to go talk to your boss. And then he'll send you to another location because there's a dead body. And when you're at the dead body, you can talk to all the people that are there. And when you leave, and then you're like, oh, I should have talked to that person about, I should ask them a different question. And you go back and then that person's gone. And then you gotta kind of go looking for them. Uh, and there's like a, I think out of the base game, there's like four, uh, four like crimes you're you're trying to solve. Uh, but they already have noir, which is 1920s or whatever, L.A. Right. And yeah, then they, there's a sort of different time settings. For and then there's the, Redview, so which is Archie. You're like in Riverdale, kind of. And there's a bunch of others coming out, but uh, it works really well, like better than I have. I, 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 because it's app based. I will be the first person to be like, eh, I don't really want to put. Well, I, I love board games, so and I like the fact that we put our phones down and uh, you know we're we're playing and we're we're talking to each other and. But this one uses an app through the whole game, and it's really good. Uh. And I think it's going to stick around. I think Lucky Duck makes it. I think it's over here yeah. somewhere. Lucky Duck makes it, and 
it's a winner. I mean, they're going to be able to make Chronicle of Crime games forever. Well, I mean, you don't put out like four expansions in a year if you're right. doing well, too. So, And you know, sooner or later, they'll get IPs for it and stuff. I mean, think if you throw a Marvel thing in there or whatever. Doing Secret Identity from DC with Chronicles of Crime. Is I mean, that Powers by Vendis. Your Powers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it it can work with anything, and that the app works really well. Uh, you feel dumb when you're running around asking every single person what size their shoe is. What size shoe do you wear? Click. Uh, <laughs> there's a muddy size ten footprint. Let's just ask everybody, see who has a size ten shoe. Yeah, I uh, haven't actually had the time to even get through a full. Yeah, like a full case yet. I've played through the base game, and uh, I really like it. Um, and it is something that I it can't be captained because it's almost like playing one of those exit games, except you know you have one person operate the the phone, right? Uh, but as long as they read it out loud, I mean, you're just all sitting there like it's like your co op clue, right? You're like, I think it's this person. Unless and, you are the world's greatest detective. Like, you're not going to be doing it by yourself. Right. And you're going to go back to Scotland Yard, and then you're going to try to solve the case at some point. And there's, like, I think there might be a time limit. Like, it, every time you click on a location, it takes away six hours or something. And if it takes you too many days to solve the crime, you lose. So, I don't know. It's Chronicles Crime. Uh, it's driving up my list. Probably, in my, probably crack into my top 50 next year, but... 51 Chronicles of Crime. All right. Well, that is it for our 60 through 51. Woo! If you like those games, stick around because the truth is, those are all hot garbage. <laughs> and now we're getting into the top 50, top 50 of all time. Top 50. So I guess we'll catch you next time. I'm Joel. I'm Hugh. See you later.